All right, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. Breakout room two uh, for the next half hour, greenhouse hygiene practices and biosecurity. So if you are coming into this session, can I ask you now please to take a seat? Biosecurity, a recurring theme at every conference, hugely important. So ladies and gentlemen, if you would come through please and take your seats. And running this session, the president of Horticulture New Zealand, ladies and gentlemen, Barry O'Neill. Um, thanks, uh, Jeff. Uh, I'm running the session as Chair of Tomatoes New Zealand, so uh, uh, great to be here, and uh, thanks everyone for coming along. Um, we've got a, a, another uh, panel um, presentation uh, 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 lineup sim uh, similar to what we had first thing this morning, um, but um, and I'll shortly ask our panel to come up. They'll give a four or five minute presentation each, and then we'll move on to questions. So um, as an industry, we've got a real challenge on our hands, um, a real challenge with uh, a new virus, Pepino, Pepino mosaic virus, and Jeremy uh, Thompson will uh, talk about the specifics of the virus uh, uh, shortly. Um, but uh, the real challenge is for growers to make sure as growers we do the right thing. Uh, because as growers we can to some extent determine our own destiny here with respect to whether this virus gets into our house and if it gets into our house whether this virus uh, spreads. So um, I wanted to give a bit of an experience I had in my industry, the kiwi fruit industry. So um, we were going along pretty bulletproof, uh, doing pretty well financially and then a, a bacteria called PSA came along. And uh, we thought, oh, well, it's over there in Tipuki. It won't get to my place in Caddy Caddy, or it won't get to uh, um, Kerry Kerry. Um, but it did. And it, and it got there because we moved it around. Uh, we moved it around with plant material. We moved it around uh, with infected equipment. And we didn't understand what the risks of moving it around were. And when you get this thing into your orchard, it's not nice. Now, this photo is actually a um, historic photo now, it's of a variety, a gold variety called Hort 16A. That variety no longer exists in New Zealand. PSA completely cleaned it out. And the other thing we didn't realise is not only were we spreading it, spreading it around between regions, but we were also spreading it around within our orchards. So we had an infection come in through an introduction of an infected plant or equipment, or sometimes it did blow in, uh, but then we didn't have good hygiene within the orchard to reduce the spread throughout the orchard. So we ended up with it going right through the orchard. Uh, the only way that we could manage this is to completely remove the infected uh, variety and then dig a big hole and uh, bury it. Um, now, um, the actual cost, direct cost, uh, was uh, of the response was uh, 50 million, half of that was paid by MPI, half of it was paid by the industry. Now unfortunately, Tomatoes New Zealand doesn't have that sort of coin. So we don't want our industry to be challenged the way that the kiwifruit industry was with PSA. The, the total losses as far as lost earnings was a billion dollars. Uh, so um, I think just to start off and set the scene before I ask Jeremy to come up, to me um, we should care and we talk about uh, hygiene um, as to me uh, it's difficult, we don't think it's important because we think someone else has got the problem and not us, but things will happen and at the moment in our industry a thing is happening and we don't know what the next thing will be. But if we have good hygiene practices in our um, houses, and if we work on the basis that something could be here in our houses that we need to be uh, managing, then we are going to be far better off. So um, we'll have the opportunity for questions at the end of the session, but I'd like to now invite Jeremy uh, Thompson uh, from MPI up to the stage uh, to talk about the virus itself and uh, what we're dealing with. Thanks, Jeremy. Hey, everybody. Uh, thanks to the organizers for inviting me to give this presentation. So I'm just going to give an overview from an MPI perspective 
of um, a Pepina Mosaic and what we've been doing in terms of the response. Um, a brief historical introduction for all of you out there that are not familiar with this virus. So it was first discovered in 1974 in Pepino, uh, which is also known as uh, sweet cucumber. And there's a photograph there of a lady with a plant uh, with Pepino. Um, so it was discovered in Peru. Um, and that publication that came out and reported that also looked in other solanaceous species to see the effects of this virus. Um, the publication came out in 1980. Um, and back then they tested it on tomato and found that it was asymptomatic. And then it kind of went silent. Okay, and then at the end of, two, of uh, uh, the last century, 1999, there was a report in the UK and then subsequently the year later in the Netherlands where Pepino mosaic virus was discovered in tomatoes. And that's when all the problems started to happen. So for the last 20 years, there's been this virus that has been spreading around the globe. So if you look at this, this uh, picture here, uh, globally it's spread to pretty much every continent. Um, it spread all over Europe, and then from there it spread in around about 2010 to um, North America and South Africa. And of course, recently to New Zealand. So at present, the virus, which is an RNA virus similar to COVID, um, there are five strains. Uh, there's an additional strain if you consider a recombinant strain. And all strains have mild and aggressive variants. And those variants can shift based on a few changes in the molecular structure of the virus. They can shift from mild to aggressive. So the strains are PE, EU, which is European, US, which is Chile 1 as well, and then CH2, Chile 1, uh, sorry, Chile 2, which is um, from, uh, from Chile, but it's also the one that we have here in New Zealand. And then there's a PES strain, which is a new strain that's suddenly coming up in Peru. So that's a sort of global overview of what's happened so far. Now I'm going to talk about New Zealand. Okay, so um, on the 19th of April, we got a call um, from some growers just outside Auckland um, saying they had suspicious symptoms. We went in, took the samples, um, and then tested those samples for the standard ones that we test, standard viruses that we test for in our laboratories. Um, and within a day, we found out that it was Pepino mosaic positive. We went back, double checked, retested, um, and found out that it was uh, Pepino mosaic. And that's where our response, our responsibility to you guys uh, clicked in. Um, we then started to apply numerous different techniques, which are depicted here on this slide, to try and characterize this virus. Okay, so then. Within two weeks, we had the full genome sequence of this virus using a technique here that's depicted uh, Oxford nanopore high throughput sequencing, that's the HTS. We got the full sequence. We also found out that the infection involved PVX as well, so potato virus X. Um, on the 4th of May, uh, sorry, on the 18th of May, another greenhouse was identified as containing the virus as well. Um, and then subsequent to that, um, we've had another two greenhouses, which is around about 20, 25 hectares altogether in total of uh, sites that are with this virus. Um, and that's the situation we're at at the moment, four, four sites, four facilities. We also, in, in this response, we requested uh, water samples. So we're testing water samples with the idea of potentially using irrigation water for surveillance. And that's an ongoing procedure. But just to give you an idea, uh, we're using calyx as well because that's very rich in the virus, so that's what we're using for our diagnostic sample and all these different methods we're employing uh, in the lab. The photograph down there, uh, the corner, that's the virus. To give you an idea, the bar at the right there is 400 times uh, smaller, than, uh, or, yeah, smaller than the human hair. So obviously it's a virus, it's very small. And this is actually our uh, strain that we've got here in New Zealand. What are the symptoms? What are the things that you should be looking out for? 
blistering in the leaves, marbling in the fruit, and if you're very unlucky, necrosis in the, uh, in the fruit there. Um, at the moment, we have a mild strain of CH2, um, and that means that you'll get very mild symptoms, but potentially that could change. And just to give you an idea of the risks or potential impact um, to growers, uh, the reports are that yield can be anything from nothing to 10% uh, loss, but the principal concern is downgrading of fruits, which can be anything from around about 5% up to 40%. Uh, and this in depends entirely on conditions, the virus strain, which we know what it is, but it can potentially change its characteristics and the tomato variety that you're, you're dealing with. Okay, thanks very much for listening. Uh, thanks, Jeremy. So we'll hold questions uh, till the end, and we'll now ask Simon to come up and uh, um, um, give his presentation, please. Um, I don't know if this picture's uh, for you or not, uh, Simon. Uh, Thanks, Barry. That'll work just fine. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to talk very, very quickly about um, uh, what Barry was referring to, the, the uh, people, the plant material, and the infected equipment in the glass houses, and um, just some of the reactions we have. We, I mean, we have one property that has the virus and one that does not, so we've been very successful in keeping it out of the, uh, um, the major property. Um, but uh, in a lot of the viruses that we do handle uh, now as tomato growers, the southern, southern tomato virus, the uh, uh, potato X virus, um, which we're already dealing with, a, a lot of the uh, uh, methods that we employ to ensure that um, viruses aren't transferred um, have helped um, in, the, in that we use the uh, mats soaked in Vircon and um, you know the, the foot baths and uh, um, the various PPE methods that we use so that's helped um, but uh, yeah it, we've certainly elevated our, our level of, of response as a result of this um, but pe people are one of the biggest uh, vectors of the of the virus and uh, just as growers, we've got to be very mindful of if, uh, your, your own people, where are they visiting? Um, are they visiting uh, various merchants? H has somebody with the virus already been through that morning um, with contaminated shoes? Now you're bringing it back to yours. So uh, these are things to be thinking about. Um, you, you just don't know where it's going to come from. It's very similar to the COVID virus in terms of the reaction and the way you, the way you operate. Um, so your own people have got to be mindful of where they go and, and um, when they come back, how they decontaminate shoes in particular and hands, clothing. Um, contractors, if, you've, if you're using contractors, and a, a lot of those contracting companies are, are quite transient in the way that they work with uh, different pools of people. Um, you've got to be very, very mindful of where they are, uh, are coming and going and make sure you've got the same people make sure that they're not bringing filthy clothes into your property and contaminated clothes and shoes. Um, visitors, uh, we've shut our properties down to anybody who is non-essential. And um, uh, you know, we, we, I mean, we get approached by a lot of people to come and visit for various reasons, and um, we've, the answer's been a blanket no for some time, and we'll continue to be so. So if somebody does need to come, then they need to have the appropriate levels of, of uh, PPE. Uh, the shoe covers, the, um, uh, they need to wash correctly and, and also um, coats or overalls which are all disposable and, and they all get dumped immediately afterwards. Um, but apart from that, absolutely no visitors. Uh, as growers you need to be mindful of some things you have to have like electricians or uh, boiler maintenance crews, uh, glasshouse repairers, they've got to come in but again they've got to tog up appropriately uh, w with the, the right PPE. Um, crop extraction, um, obviously we've got a equipment that we use in, in all of our facilities. Each time it comes out of a house, uh, particularly an infected house, um, it's uh, uh, high pressure water blasted, um, it's then doused in um, 
uh, sterilizing solution, usually Vircon or um, uh, can't think of the name, Cold to Clean is the other one. Um, at, at that point, and then when it goes to the next glass house, we go through that process again just to be absolutely sh certain we haven't transferred um, uh, the virus again. Um, things to be mindful of, uh, as, as I mentioned, people's shoes, people's clothing, um, crates. Uh, you, you, there are some who still reuse crates and uh, you need to n make sure you've got clean crates coming into your glass house um, and not be reusing crates. Um, pallets are a really dangerous thing. People don't think about pallets, but they are uh, uh, something that a, a virus will stick to nicely and, and um, you bring it into your glass house. It, what we have done is we've got, um, within the glass houses, they've got their own pallets and they don't leave, um, uh, they don't leave the, the system, if you like, so we don't bring in outside pallets. That's me, all right. I'll, I'll hand, hand you back to Barry. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thanks, Simon. Uh, and our next speaker is uh, John Harris. Uh, John, please. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, firstly, thank you very much for the opportunity um, to Tomatoes NZ uh, for allowing me to have a, uh, a few minutes. And I've had to very hurriedly rethink my presentation because, um, because Simon has pretty much given it for me and, um, and also including taking my slide. But um, there was no copyright on that at all, so I can't really claim anything. So I just wanted to, um, I really just wanted to start by reiterating that, that the slide up here pretty much to us as a, representing merchants uh, sums things up at the moment. And, and I'm sorry to have to say this, but there is definitely a, a real head in the sand mentality out there amongst our growers. And particularly, I'm probably preaching to the converted here, but particularly in the wider, wider community of growers, um, we find it very difficult to, to get the, the key messages across to those growers. They, they are still not generally taking this issue seriously. And if we think Pepino Mosaic is a, is a real concern, wait, heaven forbid, we don't get this in the country, but it, it might be a matter of, um, and when, when, if not if, but uh, if we get tomato brown rugose fruit virus into the country, we're in really serious trouble if the current practices continue to exist and meaning you know, very little hygiene management and hygiene practice uh, uh, is adopted. So I think that's a, that's a real issue that we as merchants face. We, we have this almost a disconnect between what the industry is telling us to do, what, what we know in theory should be done, but the reality of what is actually going on out there and trying to get that message across seems to be very difficult. Um, earlier this morning, I think it was mentioned that, that you know, email, sending emails and, and really good quality literature to people just doesn't work any longer. And I think we would agree with that as merchants and our, and our reps in the field in particular. Um, we need to try and do something else. We have translation issues um, as well as something just not quite uh, able to connect there with key messages. So we need to do something different there, I think. And at the end of the day, we are all in this together, and as much as I'm wearing a Haughty Centre a merchant hat, and, and you know we love to sell you guys products, uh, that's not really what this is about. This is um, this is uh, we we all have a vested interest in this. If if growers are unhappy for whatever reason and their business is um, suffering as a result of pest or disease incursion, indirectly, you know merchants are affected. The seed seed merchants are, are affected as well. We're, we're all in this together, and we have a a key vested interest, so we need to take that on board. Um, some of the reasons I think we have this head in the sand mentality are, are probably, um, you know, there's an there's a element of fear and shame out there if, uh, if you're suddenly known to, to be infected with a, a virus or a significant disease issue. Um, there's concern out there that if you do have an outbreak, uh, MPI may be involved, and, and that's going to cause some major issues, so some imagined you know, shutdown and, and closure, and you're going to be gazetted across the country or whatever. There, there are all of these sorts of perceptions out there amongst our growing community that are, that are real concerns to us. 
um, we still see some very dangerous practices occurring and um, yeah, Simon has alluded to, to some of the stuff that, that happens with contractors coming on site. Visitors, of course, are a major concern to us all. Yeah, thanks, Barry. Um, and we still see growers visiting other growers, you know, and that's some, to us that's something of, of huge concern. So um, we, we need to, once again, address these things, get these key messages across of hygiene and how, this, how these issues are, viruses are transmitted. Um, the, I was going to say that within the sector, you know, we already have this manual, this biosecurity manual that was produced last year. It's a fantastic document, particularly the first 30 pages, which sounds like a lot of literature to read, but, but it's broken down very nicely and it's, and it's summarised really well, easy to work through. Please, please talk about this and, and use it if you're not already doing so. I know there are a lot of growers out there who, who never have never looked at this really and never taken it seriously. So please do that. We cover a lot of the issues of hot crop hygiene and setting up good hygiene management systems within this manual. It's very well done. Thanks, John. All right, uh, my time is up, but well, I'm happy to take questions later on. Thank you. Thank you. Just have a seat. Yeah. Thanks, John. Our final speaker, Stefan, um, and uh, then we'll get into questions. Thank you. Do you have uh, slides? Hey everyone, um, I was actually at an event uh, the other day and I saw someone who said, my God, look how grey your hair's got. And I think it was from April the 19th it started turning grey. So this is a serious, serious virus. It's really, I think it's, um, we've got to take it hugely serious. Um, so look, I just want to talk about a, a couple of things very quickly, um, just to do with the irrigation side. So there's obviously two ways I look at it. Um, is that we have a dis disinfection phase, which is during our crop growing phase, and we have a cleaning up phase during our, our crop rotation. So uh, there's not anything that's going to stop this virus during the disinfection phase. So um, we can use different products and irrigation lines to, to prevent viruses, bacteria. Um, so they're, they're available. Um, so I'll just go to the next slide. So the disinfection of water um, is more about your build up of algae. Um, your biofilm, um, and your breed, it's a breeding ground for nasties. So um, that's why I like to use those type of products. And, and you can talk to John or other suppliers about the, the products that are out there. Um, so yeah, we've got safe hydrogen peroxide products. Um, but you've got to be careful if you're going to use those products too, because if you've got old irrigation systems full of biofilm, all you're going to do is loosen all that biofilm and block up your drippers. So. I, I'm not sure if that is something that's um, you can think of as a as a way for that's how you should always do things through your crops, but probably not for cleaning up this virus. So the the cleaning um, of the irrigation system is a real good time, and obviously this is utopia. This is what we all want it to look like. Um, so I mean, it's not it's this is a brand new greenhouse, so that's what it's going to look like, but. You know, removing your irrigation lines and soaking them in, in, in a cleaning product, it's, 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 you know, if anyone's ever got bacterial canker, which I, I had before, um, that's what you had to do. You had to take off all the irrigation lines and dip them into a big, big drum, whatever, submerge it, clean it. Um, and use products that, that can be used, that cannot be used during the, um, the growing phase. So, um, and that'll loosen that biofilm Again, if you've got a really old irrigation system, you run the risk of blocking up your irrigation. So it's always from day one with a new irrigation system, use these products. Keep the system clean the whole time. Um, and just flush the systems thoroughly. Um, just yet, yeah, extreme caution. Make sure you talk to your suppliers about the, the recommended application. Um, now, will this, if you get the virus, stop it coming back into your greenhouse? Uh, look, it's, I cannot say that for sure at all. It's just one part of the process to try and help prevent it coming back. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it, just short and sharp. Okay. Barry? Thank you. Have a seat. Uh, great. Thanks, uh, Stefan. So um, ultimately, I think our future's in our hands. Um, and uh, the response that we as an industry and as growers take to the risks and the challenges we've got here. Um, I've been in the biosecurity business for quite a few years and my observation is those industries and sectors that treat the risk seriously and take the right action, they can actually get through it okay. 
so uh, really our future's in our own hands uh, to some extent here. So um, great uh, introductory speeches, uh, questions from the floor, please. Thank you, Helen. <laughs> Thanks all for those uh, really um, informative uh, presentations. Um, Simon, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about your experience with MPI and when you um, received notification that you had the virus and just your experience of how that was because um, John talked about the fear that some growers have in terms of the uh, process of working with MPI. So it'd be great if you could elaborate on that. Yeah, um, we were obviously a bit nervous because um, if you go back uh, a decade or so ago when the psyllid um, hit, um, we, we had a pretty uh, rough ride with the, the MPI at that time, so um, we were a bit nervous, I have to say, uh, but what we found was um, they were incredibly helpful and um, very much focused on, uh, on solutions and ensuring that we could keep trading, and um, so we had a very, very positive experience with MPI and um, obviously we, we went through uh, both glass houses and took pretty extensive samples um, which is a pretty big job um, given the scale we have um, and uh, we delivered those to the, the site at uh, Glen Innes and um, they, were, they were just brilliant. So uh, our experience with MPI was very very positive and um, it sort of uh, put away all those bad feelings that we had from the solid uh, issues. Um, thanks, Helen. That's a really good question. And, and just so growers are aware, um, we're not treating this on the basis that we can eradicate it. It's at this stage uh, already widespread. So we're wanting to manage, mini minimise the impact and slow the spread. So if it's found in your glasshouse, the quicker you realise it's in your glasshouse and manage it, the better off you're going to be. It, you're not going to be shut down as far as not being able to sell your fruit. You're not going to be forced to do things that you wouldn't otherwise be doing. So I would highly encourage anyone that has concerns that they could be seeing the symptoms that Jeremy was showing on the slide there to actually either get in touch with some of the industry people that um, you know that are working on this or, or get MPI to come in and uh, do some testing. Thank you. Further questions, please. Rupina. Yeah, thanks, Barry. Um, I, we're not too sure how this virus is spread, but I mean, is there anything at the borders that, that they can do to prevent the, the spread of disease? I know it must be pretty hard, but are there any means to? Do you want to have a go at that one, Jeremy, or? Uh, at the border, I mean, so. So the present situation is, is the fact that we are, we are testing for this virus when we get seed coming in, but if it's coming from a source that's already tested, pre-tested, then we, we trust that source. They are using methods, uh, they're specifically using ELISA, uh, which is a serological method that has typically lower sensitivity than the tests that we do in our, in our lab. So um, in theory, there are ways to potentially uh, improve the screening. Uh, and the way that we do this. Whether it came in through seed is still um, um, disputable though. So it's most probable, but it's, it hasn't been clearly defined yet. And, and as part of the response, we've asked MPI to review the protocol and controls on seed imports because while this one is bad, um, as John was saying, there's another one out there that we really don't want in this country. Another question, Rupin? Uh, maybe they should introduce a footpath at the airport for every shoes that come into the country. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last question. Oh, sorry, Stefan. Just to add to that, the best way to stop getting this virus is don't let, you know, you, if you haven't got it, tre almost treat it like you've got it um, because then you'll do everything in your power to keep it out. Like you've got to try and prevent it coming into your property. And if anyone misses one of the steps, you'll get it. So it's in the country now. Um, if there's other viruses, yep, MPI hopefully will, will catch that at the border and they'll put the protocols in place. But for now, for this virus, 
treat it seriously, treat everyone that's coming to your property, think could they potentially have the virus? Have they been around somewhere? And if you do that, Repenna, you've got the best chance of keeping it out. So have that mentality, keep it out. Okay, I'm getting the signal that we need to wrap it up there. Um, so um, this virus we don't believe is eradicable. Uh, we have to manage it. So we're looking to ensure that the um, seed protocol is as robust as we can. We're wanting to ensure the nursery protocol is addressing any risks that there could be there. We're wanting to make sure that the hygiene of things like crates is uh, such that it's not presenting a risk for individual growers, but most importantly, we're wanting you as growers to ensure you have really good hygiene and biosecurity practices on your property. It's your investment. You need to look after it. Thank you. Thanks for the panel. Please give them a clap. Thanks, Mark.